My criteria in any decision I make, getting recommendations from the folks who are actually on the ground, uh, is what's going to best protect our folks and make sure that they can accomplish their mission. And uh, everything else, uh, the politics or the second guessing of these various decisions, I'm not worried about. What I'm worried about is making sure that uh, our men and women in uniform are in the best possible position to come home safely and to carry out their mission. General Keene, as somebody who's been there and who has been in contact with people at the highest levels in this government, in particular on the military side, is that true in your experience? If the question is, does he listen to his generals, we have made three major recommendations to President Obama from the field generals since January 2009. And these are the most significant. And he has disapproved all three. And that's quite unprecedented because it involves two wars. The first came from McChrystal and Petraeus. And this had to do with the size of the surge force that was going to support the decision the president made to execute what is commonly referred to as a counterinsurgency strategy. That recommendation was a minimal force of 40,000. You cannot go below it was the recommendation. The president provided a decision, 30,000 or 25 percent less. That has protracted the war. It has run up the casualties. And it also contributes to an evaporation of political and moral support of the American people for the war. The second recommendation came in 2011 when General Petraeus made a recommendation on what should be the size of the reduction of the surge force by 2012. He made a very modest recommendation in terms of force size reduction. The president's decision was to remove all of the surge forces, or 33,000, by the end of 2012. And that is ongoing right now and puts the mission in the east at risk and also increases the overall success in Afghanistan. The third decision came from a recommendation made by General Alston, who's the commander of our forces, was the commander of our forces in Iraq in 2010 and 2011. And during that time frame, his initial recommendation was 26,000 forces to stay as a residual force, not involved in combat operations, but to help preserve and strengthen the democracy, also to help train the Iraqi security forces right. and to counter the Iranian influence. The decision was no forces remain. Those were the three most significant recommendations made in the last two years, and he has disapproved all of them. I, I need a quick answer on this, but is there frustration from those in the military at the highest levels in response to that, sir? Well, certainly at the time of those recommendations, there definitely was. The, the, the problem we have in Iraq, as you can see, the political turmoil has increased, and so has the level of violence. The, the risk in, in Afghanistan, while we are succeeding in the South, and it's a credit to our troops in terms of that, and it's also a credit to the President providing surge forces, but not sufficient surge forces to do both operations in the South and in the East at the same time. And certainly there was frustration over that. Yeah. It, it was an interesting headline that caught our attention. General Keene, thank you so much for your expertise, as always, sir. It's good being here, Megan. Good seeing you. Great to have you.